In this video, we're going to assume you just bought and invested in a Tyline Commander G3 2RU rack unit, such as we're looking at here. It is plugged in. We're going to pretend like it is rack mounted. And we're going to show you just a few quick steps on how to get this going. And it's really very easy. The back of the unit, we have the input output module here. You're going to plug in input number one and or two here. Output number one or two here, of course, going to the board. You also have a third auxiliary input and a third auxiliary output. We're going to ignore all this for now, like for instance, two relay inputs and outputs for a separate video later on. You will connect an RJ45 connection here uh, to your network, so you have access to it through the toolbox and or for IP audio. Uh, we'll get to the setup of that here in just a second. And also you'll have this populated with a POTS module here, and we left it blank so you can see there is a module slot, and here is the second module slot for ISDN, for instance, and finally, of course, the power connector. Now, on the front of the unit, we're going to set up the audio first. We're going to turn inputs 1 and 2 on, and you notice no activity because we need to set the audio. To do this, we're going to go to the screen, and you can see the four prompts here below AUD, which stands for audio. We're going to press the button. This is a shortcut. We want to go into input gains, and we want to select all inputs to, right now it's set for a line level. Normally, that's how it comes out of the box, and you don't have to do anything else. But because we've got a CD player going into it right now, we're going to set it for unbalanced audio. And I move to this by m moving the menu selector knob to highlight the unbalanced audio setting. We're going to press the white button to choose unbalanced. And we're going to press the clear button to go back to the main screen. Think of the clear button as pressing escape on your keypad. Now going to the inputs, we're going to set the level. And it says here on the front, press to set levels. We're going to hold down input number one. And you notice that you have a VU screen that comes up here. We're going to turn the menu selector knob left or right to adjust the audio input as we see fit. Now, on the VU meters, green is below zero VU, and the first amber light is plus three VU. Uh, zero VU is reference to plus four dBm uh, audio input. So you want to light it so that the LEDs are just coming up and just lighting up the amber lights. This is a perfect audio level as we see here. Uh, input number two, if we needed to adjust it, you would hold that down and you would turn the menu selector knob left or right and you would set it up. Personally, I like to have it at 70%, but again, because we have a CD player coming into it, uh, this is a slightly different audio level than what you would normally see as far as this graph is concerned. You set this for whatever you need it to be, but it, again, it should be set for 70%. Next, we need to set up a static public IP address, because this is the address to which everybody from the field will be connecting into this unit. Now, one of two things has happened. At this point, you have three numbers from either your ISP or from your IT professional, your IT staff person, and that is the uh, static IP address what's called the subnet mask and the default gateway. Now to set that, we're going to go into menu by pressing menu. We're going to turn the menu selector knob to configuration, press the white button. We're going to go down to the advanced, audio, uh, advanced menu. And by going into that, we're going to press one of the white buttons again. We're going to go to land settings by turning the menu selector knob and highlighting land settings. Now we want to set up the IP setup, so we're going to go into there and we want to set up a static IP address as opposed to DHCP or the boot P settings. For a static IP address, we'll press the white button. This is the static IP address we're going to set first. Now we're going to clear out this number by pressing the clear button, and that's backspacing over the numbers as you can see, and we're going to enter in our example our static IP address is 68 dot, and for either the dot, uh, for the dot, you can use either the star or the pound keys, 68.23.15.114. We're going to press OK. We're now going to set the subnet mask by 
setting it up for 255.255.255.248. Yours may be different, but ours is 248. To clear out the zero key, we're going to press the clear button once and enter 248 so that the full subnet mask address is 255.255.255.248 and press OK. Then we're going to go to the default gateway and set that up and I turn the menu selector knob to highlight it. I press the white button. We're going to go into that. We're going to backspace over this address because we want to enter 68.23.15.118 for our default gateway. Your numbers may be different. This is what we have to set up for our static IP address. Once you're done, you can press the clear button a few times to go back to the main screen. Once again, think of this as pressing escape on your keypad. Now, normally you need to reboot it once, even though it says enter number, you need to reboot it once in order to uh, set the static IP address. We're going to quickly reboot it on the front of the unit. Normally you would just simply unplug the power, but in this case we're pressing F1 and F2 and then pound very quickly to quickly reboot the unit. And if we see IP 1, 2, 1 and 2, the numbers are ready and you are now set to do remote broadcasts.